Hey guys, what's going on? Inception here and welcome to another video. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to start off today's review with Carl's Gill. We have Gabriel and then we have that Rodriguez card that we're going to be doing reviews today. I might be streaming today as well, doing some bronze pack method, collecting coins, do some more reviews in the future because doing gameplay stuff in this game is not really relevant because it's not really set up that way anyway. So uh, I might be on later today. We'll see what's up if uh, I'm really feeling the mood. But with Carl's Gill, ladies and gentlemen, we're looking at a card that is 90 acceleration, 90, 90 sprint speed, which is decent for pace. Uh, but we are going to be checking out his height, work rates, all that kind of stuff. So he is a five foot seven player with high low work rates, left footed with four star skills and a four star weak foot. So right off the bat, I don't like the high low work rates, right? But it could actually work out really nicely in the team. Who knows? The only position I see myself using this card is in the cam position because of the height and whatnot. So he has to compensate a lot by having traits, which he has none of, right? So EA didn't give him a finesse shot trait, uh, outside foot shot trait, or anything like that. So um, it diminishes the quality a little bit more because of the fact that Opara exists as an SBC as well. But... Um, it is what it is. Uh, so like we said, 90 acceleration, 90 sprint speed. You don't, you don't necessarily need to improve that. His attacking positioning is at a 93. Uh, finishing at a 90, shot power 81, long shots at 85 with 88 composure. So since 88 composure is already decent, it actually makes more sense to just give him the finishing boost uh, in regards to shot power. Not the finishing boost itself. We're, I feel like it's just something that you're going to have to work with in regards to having 90 finishing. It's either that... Or you can give him the marksman chemistry style to improve finishing. But as you guys know with finishing in this game, you have to take those linear shots anyways, right? And 90 is already pretty decent with that. So improving his shot power as much as possible is a very, very important thing in this game. I feel like shot power is more relevant than finishing if the finishing is at like a minimum of like 87 or whatnot, right? So um, yeah, shooting improved with the maestro chemistry style. Passing stats are actually really solid on the card, considering the fact that he will be playing the cam position not too bad. He does have 87 stamina. So, you know, if you play him on the sides, you have to keep him on balance instructions. If you play him through the middle, you have to keep him on balance instructions. If you tell him to come back on the fence, he'll kind of diminish in stamina quicker because high-low work rates will make him, I think, potentially aggressive in-game because sometimes it's weird with these cards, right? Because their characteristics from their regular cards transfer over to the team of season in regards to how they move around the pitch. So we'll see how this card does in regards to that. But dribbling, we obviously need to improve. You guys know how I am when it comes to dribbling in this game. My my players need to have literally 99s because of the gameplay situation. So, um, you know, improving it as much as possible as well as shooting stats is, uh, is pretty important. Um, 75 strength, not relevant. He's five foot seven, so not really going to be a huge thing there. Now, the way that we are going to be lined up in game with this card, um, I'm going to be using the balance balance one. Yeah, I'm going to be using the balance balance one. We're going to put players in the box set to six, width set to three, and we're going to have him playing in the cam position. I never actually tried to say Maximane's card, so that's interesting. Don't worry about how the team is set up in regards to, you know, players like Danny Ceballos being there. I'm doing the review at the same time for Gabriel as well, so that way we don't spend too much time on this game when it comes to doing the reviews because you guys know how I feel about the gameplay during this time. So, um... Yeah, we'll just play Danny Ceballos and Gattuso as a CDMs. Carlos Gill will be playing in the camp position. Correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't this the guy from Barcelona? I'm pretty sure he is. Maybe I'm thinking about somebody else. But uh, we're going to take off comeback and defense on him. And we're going to keep Hullet on balance while Carlos Gill is on balance as well. So we'll see how he plays in the camp position. Hopefully he's going to be at the very least usable because he might not be that great. But we'll see. We'll see. Um, yeah, so balance instructions, tactics. Let's see what's up. Oh, this is a really cool team. Hey, man, I respect it. I respect it. <laughs> Sick. All right, guys, let's switch to our defensive tactics, see how he plays. Hopefully, he's not too bad. Yeah, dribbling's not too bad. It's okay. Ooh, instant movement. Let's try a finesse shot from there. Ooh, he hit the crossbar. So he has no traits when it comes to the finesse shot. But obviously in that situation, he actually takes a really nice shot from a long distance. If we put less power into it, because sometimes you have to get used to the uh, sensitivity of the shots with the different players because of the different stats that they have. Um, yeah, it takes a decent shot right there. His movement to get into the middle space quickly was actually really nice. 
because he's shorter, his height will definitely be uh, will be nice to have for the responsiveness of his of his dribbling. So I think that's going to be pretty important. Starts to move, but then stops instantly, which is good. You move over here, boom, boom, little dabber. I like that this card's actually usable. I will say that. Oh, what's going on over here? Um, yeah, I do like that this card is actually very usable because his off the ball movement is constantly moving. I just don't like how he doesn't get back into an onside position quick enough there. So some players are like that. There's like uh, three different levels of how fast they get back from the onside position. There is that level where I think Pozuelo did the same thing when I reviewed him. Um, and then this card's the same when he aggressively pushes up too. But at least you can expect him to always constantly be moving, which is really nice. His finesse shots are actually quite nice as well. When you give him the Maestro Chemistry Style boost, um, the power behind it is actually pretty solid. You see how he starts to aggressively push to that side instantly? So he doesn't strictly stay in the cam position. He's always going to be moving. So you have to take that into consideration when using this card. Um... He's pretty fun to use so far. I personally don't like my cams to always constantly be doing that, but it's something that you can definitely work with because once you get that little touch right there and then potentially finesse shot on his left foot, it's pretty solid, right? Like the positioning for him to get back in the middle has to be quick enough for you to be able to utilize that part of his gameplay. It's just unfortunate that he doesn't have that trait because if he did, he would actually be a pretty solid card. But the high-low work rates are incredibly noticeable in this card because he's constantly moving, right? Yeah, I wish he had the finesse shot trait. You can tell that it's just like regular, you know? If he actually had the trait, it'd be more direct once he got into those situations. But the dribbling has definitely been improved with the marksman chemistry style. Or not the marksman chemistry style, the maestro chemistry style. The finishing on the card is decent. Uh, because again, at 90, that's like an uh, uh, the usual level where it's okay because of the way that the shooting works in this game. But um, yeah, he's an okay card so far. Obviously small, so he's going to get all body from time to time. Aggressively moves up, but came back into position pretty quickly, which is nice. His height is incredibly noticeable in game because he's not really like a big player in regards to width. Uh, but again, it's not necessarily like a huge problem. It's something that you could just work with, right? Ooh, that was fast. Oh, I was trying to do like a dribble dribble and then be able to just get that drag back quickly off, but not too bad. We'll work off of that little dribble right there with Hullet. Pass off. He made that run perfectly, which is nice. Again, high, high, low, high, 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 low, excuse me, work rates. Really noticeable so far on this card for sure. His left stick dribbling is not too bad. It's not like super responsive, obviously, with the even with the chemistry style, but it's still actually pretty solid. Well, this guy's going to outpace Montoya for sure. <laughs> yep, good off the ball movement. I expected that. I like players that play off of my dribbles really quickly, right? It's very important for me. And the fact that he moved instantly once I made that small little touch is is good. So high low work rate's actually like not a bad thing. If you can work around it, it's actually really solid. His skill move was actually really fast right there, in all fairness to him. It's pretty fast. Like the drag back came off really quickly. Maybe because of center of gravity, right? Because he's so small and it just works with his dribbling stats. Like that was pretty good. Shooting wasn't great, obviously, because base finishing isn't fantastic. So he those those shots are specifically not really high percentage, right? So, but he does okay there. Ooh, law pass was very smooth right there. That was actually nice. Say Maxi Man being an absolute monster mate. Nice goal right there. Good interception right there. Neymar with his meta concept actually utilizes that empty space really nicely. So because of that angle, I wasn't really directly at a 45. So it wasn't ideal to do the heel to heel there, but crazy off the ball movement there to open up the space for himself. And I try to do a tackle there. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, say Max, I mean, it's class. Nice goal right there. All right, guys, so final verdict on the Carl's Gill card is that obviously the price of the card is way too expensive. The reason why it costs that much is because I think Opara is still an SBC, and he's obviously a very, very good center back, right? So for the price value, it's not worth it. If you've already unlocked Opara and you're kind of building like an MLS team in the future, and you're doing the bronze pack method specifically, then yeah, it would be cool to get the card on the side. Now, Value-wise, not worth it. In-game, what does he offer? In-game, the 90 acceleration, 90 sprint speed is not bad. I didn't think I didn't think it was that huge of a problem. The Maestro chemistry style definitely improves this card a lot because the fact that he's a five foot seven player with high low work rates is really really nice because you know the way that he moves around the pitch is with like this agile presence, right? Like he's always constantly trying to utilize empty space, which you kind of have to work off of because it's not a personal preference of mine for my players to do that. But uh, I mean, if you can work off of it, it's actually really nice because the way that he positioned himself in the middle area to do those finesse shots, power strikes, was uh, was actually pretty solid. Now, because he doesn't have the finesse shot trait or the outside foot shot trait, it kind of diminishes his shooting a little bit, but obviously the 90 finishing with 91 shot power is still incredibly usable. The dribbling is nice because he's five foot seven, um, but the problem with this card is the fact that, you know, with 87 stamina, because he's an aggressive attacker at high low work rates and 98 uh, attacking positioning, the way that he's going to move around, he's going to lose stamina pretty quickly. So I definitely noticed that at the end of the game. Height was noticeable uh, as well from time to time. But again, the height is very, very helpful for the dribbling as well. So is the card worth getting? No. But is he a usable card in game? Yes. Now, with League SBCs, they're pretty underwhelming because I'm pretty sure they're well aware that most people complete them before they actually finish. So it, it makes sense that he feels the way that he does but obviously don't do it for price value do it if you're trying to build towards an mls team and you already got opara's card okay so thank you guys so much for watching i'll catch you guys for the next video peace out dudes love you guys